The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In pastures green, He leadeth me, and all through the shadow of death I may walk. Of death I may walk, and I always come and me. Thou layest a table before my force, my Father in heaven, thank you so much for our friends from Rusangu. Thank you so much for Baraton. And we pray that as you speak to your people all over the world and bless them, remember us this evening. Speak to us and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. The message today is entitled, You Need This Experience. You need this experience. You need what? You need this experience. You may have a lot of experience in many areas, but not all experience is relevant at all time. If we are picking a team for soccer, football, and you have a lot of experience in hockey and rugby and basketball, that's good experience, but we don't need it. And that's why we are saying this evening that you need this experience. Amen? You need what? This experience. You don't if you don't have this experience, you are not qualified. If we need a football team and you have serious experience in wrestling, that experience is not useful for now. And that's why we are very specific that you need this and not that experience. If you have this experience, then you are relevant and should be hopeful. And that's why we say you need this experience. Brothers and sisters, the World Church has provided us a theme to use as we focus on the 10 days of prayer. And the theme that the World Church has given us is a deeper experience, a deeper experience. That is the theme 
all over the world in all languages that can be spoken in the SDA church. They are talking about what kind of experience? A deeper experience. A deeper experience. And that's why this evening we are saying you need this experience. I wish to suggest very early that the deeper experience is not experience we gain on our knees as we pray. No. I had a friend of mine. I'm saying I had because I lost contact with him. Was a Muslim, very prayerful Muslim, to the extent that because of the prayer posture, he had a mark on his face. Because every time they pray, you know, they bow down, they bow down, and the face touches the ground. And you could see from his face, he has a mark that he has experience in praying the Muslim way. But I wish to say very early as we begin this evening's message that the experience we are talking about is not experience in praying. It is not the experience we gain as prayer warriors in our powerful prayer sessions and circles where we pray and pray and pray and when you are around you can feel that there is praying going on here. That is not the experience we are talking about. The deeper experience being referred to is an experience with the one we are praying to. Not the experience in the prayer, but experience with the one that we are praying to. It is possible, brothers and sisters, to pray without having an experience with God. You can gain experience in praying without gaining experience with God. And that's why we are saying today that you need this experience and not that experience because some of us have a lot of experience in praying without experience with the God that we pray to. We need a prayer life that has an experience with God. And that's why today we are saying, you need what? You need what? You need this experience. Not that one, but this experience. Without a deeper experience with God, our prayer sessions are an exercise in futility. Without that experience with God whom we pray to. All our praying, however powerful they seem, however ground-shaking they seem, however awesome they are, are an exercise in futility. It's nothing. What the Bible says, you are chasing the wind. You are really running, and everyone can see you are running. Everyone can calculate your speed, and everyone can see the sweat, but what you are achieving can never be seen. And that's why we are saying, you need what? You need what? You need this experience. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, 22, and 23. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, 22, and 23, these are the words of Jesus that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Verse 22. Okay, I will read mine. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? Verse 23. 
And then I will declare to them, you never had experience with me. And then I will declare to them, you never had experience with me. And then Jesus will declare to them that you never had experience with me. And so, in spite of casting out demons, you are evildoers. And so, in spite of prophesying, you are evildoers. In spite of calling me, Lord, Lord, you are evildoers. Because what you lack is an experience with me. And that's why Jesus says, I never knew you. Because the knowing comes from an experience with Jesus. There are people with an experience in saying to Jesus, Lord, Lord, they have experience. I'm a Christian. Lord is good. God is great. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. It is always Lord, Lord. But Jesus says, this is not the experience you need. There are people with experience in prophesying. They can explain the prophecies. They can predict things that nobody else knows. They can read through the Vatican. They can look at U.S. politics just at a glance without having ever been America all their life and tell everything that happens in White House in detail and relate it with the Bible verses that many times doesn't make sense. But, you know, try to relate and force it there. Good experience. And they have talked about it, written about it, told everybody about it, and you see them, they are gurus in prophecy. But Jesus is saying, not that experience. Not that one. There are people with experience in casting out demons. They will tell you, ah, while we were preaching at a certain place, a girl came with the demons, and when we were praying, several other people were sent out because they were also witches. The demon spoke and said, you out, you out, you out, and only I and a few others remained. <laughs> Not that experience. Not that one. Jesus says that at the end, he will speak to that person and say, you didn't have an experience with me. You had an experience with the demons, but not with me. You had an experience with the demon possessed, but not with me. People with experience in doing many other things in the name of God. But Jesus says to them that this is not the experience you need. Why was their experience rejected? Verse 23 informs us, I will declare to them, I never knew you. They had no relationship with Jesus. They had no experience with Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we need an experience with Jesus. You need this experience. Without an experience with Jesus, we are wasting time in whatever we are doing successfully. You can be very successful. The Bible doesn't say that the demons they cast out failed to leave. No, they left. I mean, why wouldn't the demons leave if one demon asks them to go out? If one demon tells the other demons, please now leave so that we make a good name, and they leave, haven't the demons left? So mission successful. Brothers and sisters, you need this experience. We need an experience with God. We can have experience with the church business and church leadership, and even do things in Jesus' name. We have been in the church. I've always been in church board all my life. 
Since I was baptized when I was 12, I've been in the church board. We know this church. I understand the church manual, everything. I know everything. Not that experience. Not that one. No. Not that one. Because not everybody can make it to the church board. I mean, it's made of a few people. So that is not the experience. Otherwise, we will make it rotational. This group church board this month. Next, so that at least everyone can have the right experience. But that is not the experience that is needed. You can have a lot of experience in church leadership. Attend all seminars that the church puts up. Poor ones, useless ones, useful ones. You just attend. You are ever there, present. You know everything. You can even foretell what will be said next. But that's not the experience you need. You need this experience with Jesus. You need a deeper experience with Jesus over and above our religiosity. You need this experience. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and verse 16. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and verse 16. The Bible says... And when you pray, and when you do what? And when you pray, and when you do what? And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. Verse 16. And when you fast, verse 16, and when you fast, do not look 16. Good. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. The hypocrites have a wide and deep experience in praying and fasting. And they have an experience in doing it in public, in synagogues, in churches. They are known for praying publicly. They are preferred. When you want somebody to pray, you look around and obviously the one who must pray is so and so. You come and pray. They have experience. In praying. I mean, if you call somebody else, people will wonder, what's wrong with you? Can't you call so and so? They have experience in praying. They are preferred for prayer time. And their fasting reputation is known. They pray and fast to create a public impression of their relationship with God. When they come to pray and they have their Bible under their armpits, you look at them and you feel that a prayer is already an answer is already coming. They pray and fast to create an impression of their biblical knowledge. Let us pray. <laughs> Father in heaven, as you said in Habakkuk, and repeated the same thing in Zephaniah. And you know yourself you have never read Zephaniah since you were baptized. <laughs> and you have repeated the same thing in the synoptic gospels. And you are wondering which ones are those now. <laughs> synoptic what? And as you spoke through your servant, Sister White... In chapter this of Steps to Christ, page 96. The privilege of prayer. That chapter touched me, Lord, and I love. They pray and fast to create a public impression of their mastery of language. And they say, Father, we ask for forgiveness of sins, of omission and commission. <laughs> I have been sinning, but I've never committed this omission and commission. I've just been lying and cheating. What is this omission and commission? Hey! Things that are not used in regular language. Are we together? Brethren, 
that may be very good experience for a CV down here on earth, but you don't need that experience. Surely, they are seriously experienced, but that experience is irrelevant if we need salvation and answers to prayer. You need an experience with God, an experience that comes from secret communion with God, an honest speaking to God, a genuine heart seeking help from the Creator God. You need this experience. In Mark chapter 3, verse 14, that was read to us, the Bible says that Jesus appointed 12 disciples. And he named them apostles. And the Bible says, so that they might be with him, that they might be with Jesus, and that he might send them out to preach. Jesus called the disciples for two reasons. For how many reasons? For two reasons. Number one, Jesus called the disciples that they may be with him, that they may have a deeper experience with him. The Bible says that he called them so that they may be with him. The first reason why Jesus called the disciples, he wanted them to experience him. And number two, that he may send them out to preach. Brothers and sisters, Jesus still calls us for the same reasons. I'm saying that Jesus still calls us for the same reasons. I'm saying that Jesus is still calling us even today for the same reasons. That number one, we may have an experience with him. And number two, that we may go out and preach. Jesus still calls us for the same reason. We are not just called to the right church with the true biblical teachings. No! There is more. You need to have an experience with Jesus and go out and make disciples. And so, brothers and sisters... We have been called to have an experience with Jesus. Not just the right church which teaches about the Sabbath and the Sabbath is Saturday. Then you get inside and find them packed up with the politics, fighting each other. No, we were not called to come and sit back and observe people take their egos left and right. No. If one SDA church has a problem, you move to the next one because you are not called to warm the seat but to have an experience with Jesus. It is time to audit your presence in the church that you attend and ask yourself, am I having an experience with Jesus? If not, you are wasting time. Jesus called them that they may have an experience with him. We must ask ourselves, does the congregation I attend help me have an experience with Jesus or have an experience in church attendance? Any experience you gain without an experience with Jesus is a waste of time. We have so many experienced church elders, church leaders, church what? We have experienced church leaders in music, in children ministries, women ministries. You know people who have been attending children ministries from the time they were children until they are grand parents. They are just in children ministries. Others are in music ministry. Others are in women ministry. Others are in Adventist men. They have always been there. They are depended upon by the conference, the union, the division, and the general conference. They are the ones who have the final word. They have always been there. Very good experience, but that's not the experience that Jesus is looking for. He needs your experience with him. You need an experience with Jesus and an experience in evangelizing because he says he called them to have an experience with him, to be with him, and that he may send them out. Jesus has called us to have a deeper experience with him 
which we will continue breaking down in our subsequent sermons during these 10 days of prayer. We will continue breaking it down to understand what does it mean to have a deeper experience. But today we just sought to make it clear that the experience is not in praying, but the one we pray to. The experience is not in the many things we do in the name of God, but in God for whom we do those things. And so how do you gain experience with Jesus? You need time for Bible study that will benefit you. Not Bible study which you do as you prepare a sermon. Not the Bible study you do so that you go and lead in another Bible study or lesson discussion on Sabbath morning. Not the Bible study you do to continue an argument on a social media platform. That is not Bible study that benefits you. There should be a Bible study that you just do it for the sake of yourself. It may never become a sermon. It may never be presented anywhere, but it's just good for me. That is the experience you need. You need a prayer time in secrecy that nobody will ever know about it eternally except God. That way you experience Jesus for yourself and in an honest manner. You need this experience. Let me ask you brothers and sisters, do you think you need this experience? No, I'm just asking you, do you think you need this experience? Is there anyone who says I need this experience? Let me see by the show of hands. Father in heaven, look at our hands. We need this experience with you. We have had experience in praying. Now we need an experience with you. We have had an experience in many church activities and leadership and what have you, but we now need an experience with you. Lead us to this experience. We pray for a deeper experience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.